thank you dr mayur agarwal uh, and all the team of uh, hormone india for inviting me to this beautiful uh, virtual con conference uh, dear friends what i'll be talking today on a very very important uh, aspects of uh, medical nutritional therapy and what i'll be giving uh, just a brief about few diets and it is you to decide uh, the pros and cons of those uh, diets and how to recommend and why to recommend and uh, when to recommend it is your uh, take uh, these are my disclosures uh, dear friends we all know about uh, the increasing prevalence of diabetes and they are all alarming if you see here whether it is urban india or whether it is a rural uh, children and all world obesity uh, the people with obesity is increasing like anything and if you see this uh, in last 17 years if you see this data uh, this is again very much alarming in 1998 the overweight people were only 8.4% and they are increased in 2015 by 15.5% dear friends weight gain is associated with increased risk of diabetes and everybody knows that even a 5% weight increase is associated with a 33% increase in diabetes prevalence and uh, i think 1.5 fold bmi increase is associated with 90 fold increase of diabetes incidence in women 40 fold increase in diabetes in men and moreover it is ectopic fat which makes a big difference prevalence of ob abdominal obesity and visceral obesity obesity especially in indians our own study <coughs> uh, of jaipur heart study clearly mentioned that uh, whether it's a rural or urban uh, in the men and women the incidence is around 41% in urban and around 51% in urban women uh, i need not to go into the, those details about the bmi and the overweight but i think we have to keep uh, keep little bit lower bmi and now for asians i think the little cut off is not 25 but it is less than 25 and this again i don't know i, I don't want to detail about the in the august audience of this particular hormone india that they are metabolic mechanical mental all sorts of uh, side effects and adverse effects are associated with the uh, obesity uh I, it is worth mentioning here that obesity and covid-19 relationship obesity increases the risk of severe covid related covid-19 we have seen in first and second wave even in third wave we have seen this association and what are the contributors and influencers uh, probably these are most important thing the biological and medical causes we all know about that the food beverages the behavior of the person the environmental factors which are glued to our youngsters it is enormous maternal and developmental also we know that it is the, the maternal nutrition also important as far as the future uh, obesity is, uh, or diabetes is concerned of course social uh, parameters are again very important the psychological parameters and especially we have seen in covid 19 there so much of psychological feature we are log in the lockdown the obesity increases like anything of course the economic now we are a growing economy of the world and because of the growing economy of the world now your purchasing power is more hence you can purchase good food and uh, the calories we are eating too much of course environmental pressures on physical activity is again going to increase the obesity incidence dear friends we know about the metabolically healthy and unhealthy obesity the only thing is that we have to be uh, very careful while uh, managing the diabetes uh, seeing the metabolically healthy uh, or unhealthy obesity and the only thing is that there is a difference in the uh, metabolically healthy obesity the adipose tissue hyperplasia is of course there but there is a normal angiogenesis and normal adipogenesis hence there is a, a small insulin sensitive uh, sensitive adipocytes are there uh, of course subcutaneous fat store are more in the metabolically healthy obesity while in 
unhealthy obesity, adipocyte hypertrophy is there. Hence, you have more hypoxia, apoptosis, increased adipose tissue stress, increased immune cells stress. So how to manage? I think this is the 5A I want to present in front of you. You have to ask for the permission to discuss the weight to the patient. The counseling is very, very important. Then you have to assess the different uh, 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 scores and different uh, methods by which you can determine uh, the total uh, uh, obesity as well as you have to give the goal to the person that how much weight here they have to reduce it is 5%, 10% or 15%. Then according to the assessment of the obesity, you have to advise accordingly. And if patients agree, then you have to assist with the your uh, whatever they do, counseling, the medical or nutrition and any therapies. And this is what we know that even the, the little weight loss is associated with the hypertension and uh, hyperglycemia. Uh, and if it is 5 to 10 percent, it is beneficial in prevention of type 2 diabetes. NAFLD, you have just listened about PCOS and dyslipidemia, while 10 to 15 percent weight loss is very useful in cardiovascular disease uh, and NASH. Of course, if you are actually very keen for more than 15% of the weight loss, I think you can think of type 2 diabetes remission and reducing the cardiovascular mortality. Uh, this is uh, one study which has come from UCLA and uh, I have just uh, downloaded from the Danik Bhaskar here and what this suggests that uh, if you are taking these pizza, burger and all these things and if you have a genetic preponderance, I think it is very difficult to reduce that obesity in the later on. So you have to start as early as possible if you want to do the medical nutrition therapy in your patients of diabetes, uh, patients of obesity. Uh, and what are the principal components? Probably this is what we have learned and we are actually advising to our patients that 50 to 60 percent calories come from carbohydrates. Uh, preferably it is from the complex carbohydrates and then 10 to 15 percent from proteins and 20 to 30 percent from visible and visible fats. Now I'll give you some of the different diets which we can advise to our patients depending on their uh, assessment of the obesity and individualized comorbid uh, diseases. Uh, dear friends, we have, uh, we have the low carbohydrate diets we have low fat diet, low glycemic diet, Mediterranean diet, and very low calorie diet. And if I can compare here, I'll give you a little brief little later, but uh, low carbohydrate actually uh, is uh, defining the characteristics of the that 45% or less than 40% of your total calories from carbohydrates. Low fat means you are less than 20% calories from the fat. Low glycemic uh, diet means limiting your glycemic load from those food. And Mediterranean diet is supposed to one of the best diets. And even our Indian diet is one of the best diets, uh, mimicking the common themes of traditional dietary pattern. And of course, very low calorie diet, which is known as typically ketogenic diet, where we give less than 800 calories per day. So which diet is best? Uh, whether it is Atkins diet, which says that it is high protein, low calorie, low carbohydrate diet. American Heart Association which says that it is 30% of fat, very high carbohydrate, very low fat, Mediterranean diet or Fizikova full moon diet. Uh, these are the diets which have a different percentage. Uh, of course, from clinic, uh, clinician's perspective, the most important thing is the calorie expenditure. We have to be very focused and concentrate on this calorie restriction and calorie expenses. Of course, the optimal rate of weight loss is again very important, which is very strongly recommended to our patients. Most diets have the short term results. Hence, we have to be very careful while advising. Of course, goal of 5 to 10 percent weight loss especially within six months is the uh, most advisable to the patients. So for that, pursuing that weight, this much of diet, vegetable and fruits are very, very important, which contains high fiber, whole grain foods and water consumption is the most important thing. Uh, now, carbohydrate restricted diet. Uh, there, uh, there is one study which says that very low carbohydrate diet versus high carbohydrate diet has no significant difference in weight loss. 
even moderate carbohydrate diet and high protein diet uh, has equal uh, sort of a weight loss. Of course, the low carbohydrate diet is little better. Uh, so overall, we want to know about the, the total uh, long-term studies. And long-term studies clearly said that low-carb diet may reduce diabetes risk independent of the weight loss. So it is still good to have the low carbohydrate and little bit high protein and high fat. Then it is very important now, it is very popular with the general population, the ketogenic diet. Dear friends, in ketogenic diet, if you see here, the most of the carbs uh, are now uh, converted into the high fat and the total uh, calories is very less in the ketogenic diet. So, uh, so overall, ketosis from the prolonged fasting is heavily popular, increases the ins in insulin resistance. Hence, while low carbohydrate ketogenic has shows a dramatic improvement in the short term, they can increase the morbidity and mortality in the long run. Please see to it that ketogenic diet cannot be on a longer period of time. Of course, high protein diet also uh, have been compared with the standard protein diet. And again, uh, based on systemic review or 24 uh, uh, methodological uh, limitations, high protein diets are associated with decreased body weight, decreased fat mass, decreased triglyceride, increased fat-free mass, increased resting energy expenditure. One of the study which is very, very, uh, I mean, a popular study known as preview study. It is a 34 months study clearly uh, suggests to us uh, regarding the, the efficacy of uh, the uh, protein diet, uh, the high protein diet also. Uh, of course, the low uh, uh, calorie diet or this is reduced fat intake, low fat diet uh, is a pattern should be less than 20%. It may be less than 25%, less than 30%. So all are almost similar having the, the similar metabolic effect. Low glycemic index diets are also now getting very popularity, which decreases the body mass, decreases the total fat mass, and decreases the BMI. So this is also getting popularity now. Paleolithic diet, where we are taking most of the raw fish uh, or the raw meat or the, the eggs, vegetables, fruits, and nuts. And again, this paleolithic diet as uh, uh, I mean, studies are done, randomized control trials have been done. It is a short term follow up, but long term follow up has not been done. What is more important is the Mediterranean diet, which is very, very important and very, I mean, efficacious, which reduces the, your weight, reduces your calories uh, total. And of course, the metabolic effects are enormous. So now a word about the commercial weight loss diet. Please see to it. Our youngsters should not go into the weight, commercial weight loss diet. This is very, very dangerous diets. Then the calorie restriction, of course, we need calorie restriction. And for that calorie restriction, portion control is very, very important. And I should not go into the details of that. We know that the portion control is very important and calorie restriction. Our whole I mean, discussion is on the less calories more carb, uh, more proteins and less carbohydrates. So if you compare the different diets, I think low carbohydrate versus low fat has equal effect almost. Low calorie vegetarian diet and low calorie Mediterranean diet is better as compared to other things. Of course, vegan diet may increase weight loss as compared to non-vegetarian diets and some people have already studied and presented and published this thing. Little bit word, word about the intermittent fasting. Again, this is getting more of the more molecular studies are being the, uh, uh, for the intermittent is fasting. And of course, for those small trials, uh, uh, this is okay as far as the intermittent fasting is concerned. The only thing warning here is the dietary supplements. Please do not have the dietary supplements here. The diet supplements sold for weight loss, muscle building, and energy were associated with almost three times the risk of severe medical outcomes uh, uh, as compared to vitamins. Please ask your youngsters if they are going for gym and taking commercial supplement. This is not a good thing. So, dear friends, we know about the different components and we have to design our medical nutrition therapy in such a way that it should be balanced. It should be 
I mean, the carbohydrate should be less, high protein, uh, fat should be, I mean, good uh, quality of fat should be there, cooking practices should be good. And this is how we actually design our medical nutrition therapy in this form. The protein should be increased, the fat should be in the form of the good um, PUFA and MUFA ratio should be there. And I think omega-3 fatty acids is still important. Two important things, refined oils and refined fats are not good because they are the good source of oxygen-free radicals and more source of trans fatty acids. Again, frying, especially the reheat of oil and reuse of the oil for our ladies most of the time what they do, they actually use the reheat and reuse of oil which actually ultimately converts to volatile decomposition products and acrolein chemicals develop uh, uh, into the reheat of your and this is very irritating to your colon and sometimes may cause colon cancer. So take home message, calorie restriction is the most important if you have uh, having the medical nutrition therapy for obesity, the composition of macronutrients in such a way that it should lead to weight loss and of course uh, micronutrients should be added uh, if the people are feeling the deficiencies. The weight loss is not difficult in the short term, dear friends. You have to counsel your patients for a long term maintenance of that weight loss. Healthy, balanced diet is ideal for health benefits irrespective of whether it causes weight loss or not. Weight reduction must focus on the whole lifestyle and not solely on the diet. So this is my message to all of you for today's medical nutrition therapy. Weight loss diets are fat diets. The whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are so certain of themselves, yet wiser people so full of diets. That is the Bernard Russell told us. So prevention matra, eat less, eat on time, eat right, walk more, sleep well, and on time and smile. This is uh, the mantra given by Dr. Shashank Joshi and I adopt to my whole patient. Thank you very much.